afternoon, everyone. Um, it's Sunday, the 22nd of March, and um, we have just had a wonderful uh, morning of worship at People's United Methodist Church uh, at 9 a.m. We got permission to uh, have drive-in worship, so it's just like a drive-in movie theater of long ago. Uh, instead, uh, you're going to drive in your car, bring your breakfast and your coffee with you and stay in your car. And we sang some hymns and we gave praise and thanks and we tooted our horns and made some shouting our men's and flashed our headlights. It was great fun. Um, we're going to do it again uh, next Sunday. So if you get a chance to join us, please do. Uh, we, we had a great time. Uh, I just spent a couple of hours relaxing and warming up because it was 22 degrees out and um, warming up um, sitting in the chair with some coffee and my cat and thought that I'd share with you a little bit of what we did um, on this Sunday at our drive in worship time. So uh, let's begin with um, part of the family, which is becoming our traditional uh, welcoming song. Losing my voice a little bit there. Um, we went from that to singing Shall We Gather at the River. People's United Methodist Church in South Thomaston is on the West West Keg River in South Thomaston. So very appropriate that we um, sang Shall We Gather at the River. Um, give me a moment to remember how to play it on the ukulele. And uh, we'll sing verses one through four. If you have the United Methodist hymnal, I believe it's number 723, and I know it exists in other hymns, hymn books as well. Uh, today's opening 
prayer was written by uh, a member of the congregation. And um, I'd like to share that prayer with you. So gain a sense of calm and an attitude of prayer and thanksgiving as we hear these words. God, creator of all things in heaven and on earth, we thank you for our lives and the beautiful world that you have given us to live in. Yet we know that this world is broken and that many harmful things exist in it. War, poverty, hunger and sickness, including COVID-19 caused by the new coronavirus with which we are all now afflicted. God, we pray that you enable us to overcome all these things. Holy God, we know that faith in you is the anecdote to all life's problems especially the problem of fear. We ask that you strengthen our faith and trust in you. A wondrous God, we know that you are the great healer. We ask that you protect and heal our bodies, even as you guide and protect the doctors, nurses, and all healthcare workers as they care for all of us, and especially those who are ill. Wondrous God, we know that you are the source of all knowledge and wisdom. We ask that you reveal scientific truths to those who are now currently searching for treatments and vaccines and even cures for this disease and others. Above all else, God, we know that you are the source of all love. We thank you for bringing the whole world together even if it is because of wide world disease and distress. The coronavirus does not respect borders, nor does it discriminate because of nationality, politics, race, wealth, sex, or religion. In our universal vulnerability, you have shown us our common humanity. In our need, you have given us opportunities to serve and care for others. For these things, we are truly grateful. It is in the name of the great healer, Jesus Christ, we pray this and all things. Amen. Amen. We, uh, we then tooted some horns and we uh, flashed our lights and said, woo -hoo! So, yay, amen to God. Praise God. Uh, the scriptures that we read today, I'm going to be reading from the New uh, Revised Standard Edition. This is uh, my study Bible that I have here at home. The uh, we'll, we'll be reading the first um, one through three verses of Psalm 137. And then we'll read just a teeny smidgen of the John 14 passage that we read uh, on Friday, I believe it was. So here is Psalm 137. By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down, and there we wept when we remembered Zion. On the willows there we hung up our harps, for there our captors asked us for songs, and our tormentors asked for mirth, saying, Sing us one of the songs of Zion. How could we sing the Lord's song in a foreign land? And again, from John's Gospel, chapter 14, beginning at verse 25. I have said these things to you while I am still with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. Here ends the scripture lessons for this day. May God add a blessing and an understanding of this holy word for our daily lives. Amen. So in short, we spoke today um, about coming together as community in times of stress. 
And there are times we feel maybe that we're out in the wilderness and away from our homes and from places that are familiar and wonder just how can we sing those songs of faith and share those happy stories and happy times uh, when we're in a place of, of such anxiety and confusion. And that's exactly what God is asking us to do, to remember those times of happiness, to remember and recall God's presence and all that God has done for us and that God continues to do. Uh, I found it amazing the, the spiritual connections that were happening um, with me this week. Um, and in particular, uh, over the last three days with um, this spirit calling forth both um, from the Newcombs who are attending People's Church in South Thomaston, um, as well as myself, and then to read some of the writings that uh, I have been reading in journals this week. And then this morning, waking up to hearing um, the, the program on public radio on being, all, all the messages talking about the wondrous, miraculous, calling forth of love and compassion in times of great distress. In history, we can look back and see where humans really pull themselves together and really begin to help one another out, irregardless of boundaries and of ethnicities and of various ways we categorize ourselves. Um, humans just coming together for the common good. And uh, one person was, was exploring that maybe that is what the actual calling of humanity is. And that maybe it is the structures that we have created in this world to bring order to our societies that kind of pit us against one another in, a, in such a way that um, it's almost we're, we're always competing. We're competing for importance. We're competing for wealth. We're competing for jobs and health care and for our voices to be heard and for us to be uh, welcomed into communities. We're competing so much that this, this sense of hatred and this sense of fear of one another has overridden who we've been actually created to be by God, which are these true loving compassionate beings. And maybe it's in times of anxiety and stress when our true nature is revealed. I think that's what Jesus was calling us forth to do, you know, to, to let this true essence of who we have been called to be come out. But not just in times of stress and anxiety, um, but all the time. You know, where, where could we be as, as, as a world if we lived this true calling of compassion and love every single day, irregardless of whether we are in a time of, of chaos and crisis or if we're in a time of great peace and great well-being? So we came together at People's Church in our cars maybe separated because of the boundaries of the vehicles, but not separated in heart and spirit, to lift up songs of praise and to realize that that is what we are meant to do, to sing praise to God, to bring hope and comfort to those who are around us, to welcome in more and more people into this great family of God and to let them know they are loved. So as the days and weeks go on and we begin to find some clarity of path through this time of, of social distancing, uh, let, us, let us draw closer to one another in our hearts. And maybe when this time has passed, we will remember how to sing the songs of Zion in the strange new land that is coming to us. Let us pray. A oh, wondrous God, we have spent this day both in your presence as well as doing daily tasks. We hope that what we have done this day is good in your sight and brings peace and wholeness into this world. We lift up those 
who are in harm's way, the doctors and nurses, first responders, law enforcement, and all who are caring for the elderly and those in rehab situations. May you bring comfort to them and help to keep them healthy and well. Bring wisdom to all of us as we learn to maneuver and live in this new way. May we find ways of connecting with each other. We lift up for your clarity and wisdom to be upon the doctors and the researchers and our government leadership as they try to move us forward as a people into what is coming next. May we always portray the face of Christ as we live each day. We pray this in all things in Jesus' name and unite with the prayer that he gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Oh, I wanted to point out, Annie was asking, did I get the, um, the piece from our dear friend, Eleanor? See, I moved it so that Annie could see it. She couldn't see it over by my Celtic cross, but there it is um, right over my shoulder. So yes, Annie, joy always comes with the morning. Joy comes with every day. Uh, so we ended um, our time together this morning with just a closer walk with thee. So uh, if you know it, sing along at home. If you don't know it, um, you need to check it out. God bless you all, and uh, I'll try singing this through. i got to remember how to play it again. I am weak, but thou art strong. Jesus, keep me from all. Let it be.
Dear Lord, let it be. Let it be. Dear Lord, let it be. Amen. God bless you all. We'll see you later.